Okay, so we're over on the Nichols horizontal. Um, this should be a cool little operation I wanted to show. I really like this machine. Every time I get to do something on here, it's kind of like an extra bonus for me. Um, I haven't done that much horizontal milling, you know, compared to everything else, but I really enjoy it. Um, there's something cool about the action and the rigidity and the, the cuts you can do with these machines. I'm really pleased with it. Um, I think this will be the first 1018 steel part that I've done on this machine. Uh, we've done lots of aluminum and a fair amount of stainless on here, so I'm sure it will be fine, but um, it's just kind of a cool operation. I feel like not a lot of people get to use uh, uh, one of the exposed like manual uh, horizontal mills anymore so I don't know I like to share it and this one is cool this is on the old nickels with the hand lever so you actually move the part you move the table with the hand lever which is really cool it seems really weird but it works great it's super fast and easy and um, let's just slice this guy here this is uh, putting a slot in it. Um, if you look at uh, the holes, we're going to go right through a, uh, a hole in the part if I got my depth correct. So let's just give this guy a cut and see what we got. This is 1018, so super soft. Almost like cast iron to this machine. It's just cool. I mean, how else would you do this kind of a, a deep, narrow slot in steel other than getting into some high-tech, newer stuff like EDM? And I can just come over to this machine and set it up in five minutes. You know, a lot of the times we have a saw sitting on this all the time and because we use it a lot for slots, so you can just come over here, quick, easy setup, see we're cut all the way through literally like a 10 minute operation even when you only need to make one part it's just cool and there we go I decided to put the ram of the arbor press in the mill and face it off. Uh, originally I wanted to do this in the lathe, but the bore in our spindle is not big enough. Uh, so this was the next best thing. And uh, you can kind of see that there's a big crater in the middle that's probably, you know, at the worst about a hundred thou deep. And that is from uh, people pressing small diameter stuff um, with a lot of force and it literally impacts the press tool into the ram. Uh, this is not, you know, you, you might think that this was a hardened steel, but it's really not. It's really just a uh, soft bar stock. Um, so the ram has a lot of strength, but you can damage it. Uh, so. Normally, people that care about the end of their ram would put a cap on it. You would just turn a little disc and, uh, you know, put a protective cap on there that would, you, you would use to press things with that would prevent damage to your ram. So anyway, I milled the end. Um, before anybody gives me any, any heckling responses here, um, you know, the squareness is what really matters. Uh, I don't want to hear complaints about end mill deflection, you know, you get a good 5.8 solid carbide data flute and uh, do a couple finish cuts and then check it with the square and you'll be totally fine. Um, being square within, you know, 5 tenths or a thou is totally acceptable for this, considering, you know, all the other things going on. The, the press machine itself is not made for uh, huge high tolerance. You know, you have to integrate that into your tooling in other ways. So. Um, 
this is much better than it was. I didn't really want to clean it up uh, totally because that doesn't matter. We're going to put our own cap on it to do it properly and as long as the cap seats square to the rim and is fully supported, that's all that matters. I did have to take the Arbor Press apart uh, in order to get the RAM out, uh, which I had never done, but it's an interesting experience just to see how it works. It's very simple, um, literally just two set screws, I think, and, and the whole thing comes apart, and a couple keys and things like that, but um, it's one of those things where I would never take this apart unless we needed to do some obvious maintenance on it. Uh, or we needed to change something or fix something and in, in this case we're adding a fixture to it essentially and uh, in order to get that fixture on there I needed to pull the RAM out to do some repair on it because it never had a cap on it before and with a lot of use with inexperienced people they often will press things in around the edge of the ram which will actually distort the head of the ram itself so this diameter is supposed to be two and three sixteenths i think it is and down here it was in various places you know uh one to four thou big because it had been mushroomed out so i had to uh fix that by hand basically with a file and uh, and just checking it as I go because th again this part uh, doesn't fit in the lathe it looks like it may at one point have had a center uh, I don't know if I had a drill center in the end maybe maybe not um, that would have been nice for doing repair because I could have put it on centers and turned it to correct the mushrooming but anyway uh, with a little bit of work, I got it to fit the correct size. So this ram cap is 2.188 or 89. So it's just like one or two thou bigger than the ram. So it makes it easy to get it on as long as the ram is the right size. And um, then do the uh, little clamp screw on there to hold it in place to do what you're going to do. So anyway, I need to put this back in and put the machine back together so that I can put the cap on and show you actually what this is for. Now that we have the arbor press back together, let me show you how this thing is supposed to work. So you've got your fixture bolt pattern. It's a half inch bolt pattern with quarter 20 threads on the face. And we've got a slotted flexible feature with a bolt that goes through it. So that will clamp on the ram diameter. So this guy slides on, and then you just clamp the bolt to fix it to your ram. And then I also made this guy, which is just an adapter block, um, a fixture example of what you could put on the face of this. The whole idea is that you can bolt anything you want or need to to the face of your press ram now. And this particular adapter I need for a project that we're doing next here in the shop. And 
this adapter holds these different press dies that we have. We have a whole series of these for press forming different parts and it looks like we're going to be making more of these in different kinds so this is specific for that and it allows you to securely squarely clamp you know your standard three-quarter square die uh, to your head so now you don't have to hold it while you're doing an operation and this in this case is the bottom die so you would slide your part in and then you can just um, press form your part so this I did quickly last night and this morning because we need it for a project but I've wanted to do this for quite a while um, so if this is something that seems useful to you uh, or you guys might want one uh, it's something that I would love to make a short production run of these um, if enough people say that they want them and a few people order them um, it's something that we could just keep in stock uh, and have available I think the next version of it I will do some changes and some improvements this is literally the first version that I made um, and it will work fine for this project um, but I think we can make it even better and uh, wanted to share that with you guys and see what you thought. I just black oxidized this, uh, really just for the cool factor, um, but it does come out to be a nice, uh, you know, finished professional tool. And, um, nope, took my screw out, put this guy back in. So I think it could be a really useful thing it's really quick and easy to set up. There's other ways and other machines to do this on, but most people don't have those. Um, the other alternative I was thinking is we could do a similar thing with a die shoe for a punch press machine. You could actually put one of those in your arbor press with something like this, where instead of bolting a square fixture, you're bolting a round plug, super simple, like everybody uses for uh, pushing bearings in and out, and that plug would attach to the top of your die shoe. Um, but what we're going to do, because we just need the square die, rectangular die set up, is probably put some kind of basic heavy fixture plate on the bottom that this, the bottom um, die, gets mounted to, and then you have you know you make your alignment to the ram and then you're good to go for that uh, operation this has been really good for us for short production stuff um, these kind of parts we're making like a few dozen samples or a few hundred at a time um, but of course you know tooling is dictated by the volume of parts you're making so if you're making 10,000 parts you wouldn't want to do it on this you would do it on another machine that was faster um, but this is a great intermediary uh, and has been wonderful for us so I'm kind of expanding these options as well as uh, expanding our options with the punch press machines so let me grab a die shoe and quickly show that to you because I think that is a cool option but then it, it, it limits you in size quite a bit so here's a die shoe that gives you the same kind of alignment and operation that we're looking for here um, you could simply bolt on an adapter, basically a tube, a thick wall tube that would bolt to this and go around this and clamp on that. And then you would have the same functionality where by moving the ram up and down, you would pull the die shoe up and down. And inside you would have your punch and die that would do your operations in perfect alignment. I mean that's how uh, the high volume production is done. You could adapt that to this as well for uh, small stuff that you needed to you know do some bending maybe 20 parts or whatever and it might be easier and faster and safer to set up uh, a shoe on this than it would be a punch press. Um, you are limited with access if you need to bend complicated stuff that curls and moves then you're limited with space a lot with the uh, the shoe 
but it's an interesting option and uh, just wanted to throw that out there but yeah I really like this idea we're going to use it for a couple projects and play around with it uh, again if you guys are interested let me know I would love to make stuff like this uh, and I would love to make and sell stuff like this um, so let me know what you think so I just wanted to mention that this uh, ram cap fixturing option could be added to any machine uh, and any size RAM. Um, you can either let us know what size it is or what model it is and uh, we can make it fit round or square. Mm -hmm.